Hello, everybody, and welcome back to an all-new episode of Artsy Fartsy Immigrants. This is an episode I have been hyping up and excited for for a long time now. But without further ado, I'm very happy to present to you your very wonderful personal water sommelier, Martin Rieze. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I hope everybody feels thirsty already. Oh, yeah. I think everyone feels very thirsty. That's great. Thirsty for this juicy episode. <laughs> <laughs> we had a really dirty joke earlier that was like, yeah, Martin knows what gets you wet. Water. Hey, we're going to do the uh, wet t-shirt contest later, I thought, huh? <laughs> With all these... Are you up for it? <laughs> yeah, dude, always. I did it, by the way. I did that once for Playboy Radio. And this was for many, many years ago. It was like, I did Conan, I did all this, and then suddenly Playboy Radio reached out. Playboy said, Radio. Playboy Radio. And they said, like, yeah, we would love to have you on the show and here doing a water taste. He's saying, okay, Playboy Radio, it's radio. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, nothing can happen to me. It's radio. It's just sound. <laughs> So I walked into this with my friend and literally 20 bunnies, almost naked, greeted us. And we are all there with our water bottles saying, what's going on? It's radio. So what they did, they started with the water tasting with me. And then after all, they said, okay, we get now all the taste of the different waters. Now let's play which water is the best water for the wet t-shirt contest? <laughs> this seems against all rules. And they had all the bunnies there and started to, yeah, um, get very excited about all these waters. It was kind of cool. I didn't even know Playboy made radio because it seems to go against everything they stand for. They did back <laughs> in the Listen to the titties yeah. bouncing in the distance. Maybe you know? it was for Sirius XM. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I think that was it. This reminds me of like all these old Howard Stern uh, yep. shows. Oh, absolutely. Oh my God. He doesn't really do that stuff anymore. But I think, he used right? to have that. It's the same yeah. like here with RTL back in the days of Prozeben. This was all like during the day, they showcase the stuff, what, you do, what you're showcasing right now on TV. But in the evenings, like at 11 or 12 p.m., they showed soft pornos. Really? On RTL, RTL2 and everything. No they were all way. like dirty, dirty, dirty channels back in That's the days. That's so funny. I'll never forget, like, uh, and then we can get into the stuff <laughs> about they who, had a show about who you are. On RTL, it was super famous with Hugo Egon Balder. You know that guy? Uh, no, I don't think he's so. like a very big, like he's still like a big entertainer on RTL. Mm -hmm. He has several shows, comedy shows as well. Hugo Egon Balder, but he started with a tutti frutti burlesque show where they get naked on RTL. On RTL, yes. what? That's yes. crazy. That, that seems like, it's like if, if, if an American, for those who uh, have never been to Germany, that's like if you had a soft porn channel on PBS, you know, or, or like CBS in the evening or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that was back in the days, a big thing for them. That's really crazy. Um, yeah, well, for, let me like, let me just start from, from the beginning uh, with you, because I've been excited about having you here. I appreciate you making the time and effort to come here to, to my home here in Munich. Hey, it's great. Um, and cause it's, it almost didn't work out. You know, we had a little bit of a time conflict that was a little bit like, no, I'm going to miss Martin. No, I want to see him so bad. And then you, you very kindly made it work. So I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm imagining that we're talking to my mom here a little bit who doesn't know who you are, or how special you are. Uh, so we have to go back to the basics a bit, but you are, uh, were you like America's first nationally recognized yes. water sommelier yeah. can you break down for people who don't know what that might mean like what that is just in a, in yeah. basic terms i will tell a little bit the story how i became a water sommelier i think then you will realize what my job title actually entails so i'm coming from the danish border yes i'm german obviously you can tell right away when i'm saying hello everybody <laughs> knows okay that guy is german <laughs> that's the reason you found me because you made fun of me what i thought was great well you, and you, you took it like a sport and you yeah. apologized even <laughs> in that he said martin please and he said no i think it's great because that's the biggest recognition you can get when other content creators making fun of you that means you're actually making it yeah, that you're, is you're, way better. Your brand is recognizable. Yes, yeah. I think this is so much better. And I love to be on podcasts, especially comedy. I'm all the time on comedy podcasts because it's just funny what I do mm -hmm. for people. So I like that. So I'm coming from the Danish border. There's the North and Baltic Sea, obviously. There's two big oceans. So I was surrounded by water all the time. And when I was four or five years old, I was just fascinated about the different tap waters in Europe when I was traveling with my parents on vacation time. And it was not about hydration for me. I was just interested in the taste of the tap waters. 
And then in my teens, I forgot a little bit about water because I was drinking the other waters, what I'm considering this, and beer and obviously uh, all other alcohols, what we just drink in Germany when you're in your teens. It's <laughs> just normal. Uh, we're growing up with that. My parents gave me my first alcohol when I was like five or six, like for tasting. Alcohol? My, yeah, alcohol, yeah. The my beer, father, my beer father, or yeah, My or? father was a wine sommelier. And my mother was drinking all the time beautiful wines, and I always tasted. It's not like that I'm drinking them, but I tasted them. Right. And my parents always encouraged me actually to taste. I never put myself a glass when I was a child or something. Yeah. But just like a nip to just understand what that actually is. Like and the I texture think, and stuff. And I think it's the right approach to showcase your kids as well very early on what alcohol is, to talk about it, to not make it, oh my God, it's the bad thing. You should not do this because then you want to do it. Let's be honest. Of course, uh, of course. So it's always easier, I think, to just showcase your kids what it is, talk about it, that when you do it too much, then you have a problem. Like my parents told me this as well, like you can taste it, but when you drink too much, you're getting drunk and then you can get addicted. And so they teach me about alcohol. Yeah. And I never had an alcohol problem. I think Guess the best, what? why I love that about Europe, actually, like I learned pretty late in, well, I guess, well, I learned pretty late after living here that the starting age for wine and beer is 16. Correct. And so that, of course, you, you tell yourself, oh, so they're trying stuff at 15, maybe even 14. But you think about like the alcohol issues in the States compared to here, significantly different because yes. uh, so it's so sheltered in a lot of families Correct. in the States, yeah. you know? It's the same... I know it, it sounds crazy that I'm talking about prostitution now, but in legal, we are just Playboy Radio. Yeah, no, but let's be honest. Hookers. It's legal. It's legal in Germany to prostitute. It's just a, it's a business. Yeah. So the 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 government thought it's gonna happen anyhow in every country. Why not legalizing it to take it to make it safe for mm -hmm. both sides, and to control it. And our rape rate or rape rate is way lower than obviously them in the United States because yeah. we make it legal. Yeah. And it's very interesting. I, I know many, many friends actually who work in the, in the red line district from back in the days when I was still in Germany. And they told me all, it's not just about sex. It's mostly about talking. Right. A lot of people the going intimacy. to prostitutes to getting hugged, to talk, to just like, be comfortable mm -hmm. with another human being. It's kind of sad, right? That and they're... yeah, it's kind of sad that this is happening, but imagine it's even sadder when it's forbidden by law. Yeah, that's a good point. Huh? If so, you find out that the majority is just looking for correct. comfort and it's illegal. Yeah. That's, so yeah. I think I'm I totally for prostitution. I'm absolutely a big advocate for it to make it legal, to make it safe. Obviously, trafficking is a terrible thing. And with legalizing something... You will take all this stuff out. Yeah. What is great. This was the first thing you said to me when I opened my door at, at 10 a.m. I said, hey, Martin, right? And you go, I'm all for legalizing prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> Let the hoes no, but when we're do it. on this thing. Like, I think like legalizing <laughs> stuff always helps. And I think it's a big difference between like, because I live now in Los Angeles. It's so interesting to see the differences in culture by in so many levels. Yeah. Let's say it like that. Yeah. But let's sure. go back to... Uh, the wet water content. <laughs> <laughs> so as a child in my teens, and then in 2005, I worked in a mission lost restaurant. My background business-wise is hospitality. Mm -hmm. I was general manager of a mission lost restaurant in Berlin. And a guest came to me and said, hey, Martin, you have over a thousand different wines, but you just serve one brand of water. And he didn't like the taste of that particular brand. Oh, so one guy came and yeah, told you Yeah, one guy about this. asked me this. Like he was a guest in my restaurant. And I looked at him and then I like had this... Like this, you know, this bad Hollywood movies where you have like, when you have an idea, suddenly this light bulb comes above you and like, bing, yeah. and you get this idea of like, there's an idea. And I had this moment because I looked at him. I remind myself of my childhood. Yeah, sure. I always tasted water and I know that water has taste. Why not creating a water menu? Because it's all about options in the restaurant business. That's our job to give options to the guests. Yeah. That's the job of a restaurant. That's the reason you have different Wines, you have different liquors, you have different beers on tap, you have different appetizers, you have different desserts, you have different uh, main courses. It's all about options. How did you, when someone recommends having uh, more than just one water option and you think of having a menu, how do you make your first menu? What to you makes those differences? Yeah, it, it was actually tough for and me. And how did because, you learn them? You know, Because for me it was like, that's an interesting concept. So I started to Google, literally Googling water brands. 
And then I thought like, okay, so why has water actually taste? Because that needed to be like showcased in the menu. And it all comes down to the mineral composition of each water. Because from a chemical standpoint, it's H2O, water, H2O. But mother nature does not know the concept of just H2O. It doesn't exist actually on this planet. There's always minerals dissolved. It doesn't matter how, how pure a water is. There's always minerals dissolved from nature. You can man-made 100% pure water, just H2O water. It would be distilling water to boil up tap, collecting the steam. Now you have pure H2O. What is terrible in taste. Because it's kind of like cooking your soup with no salt. It's tasteless. It's boring. That's a good metaphor, yeah. So... Mother Nature crafted all these amazing waters by passing through different stone layers, the rainwater, right. and collecting different minerals. And these minerals are actually very healthy for you, like calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, all these amazing minerals, what your body needs on a daily basis. Yeah. Without that, we would have a big problem. We cannot generate them by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have to gain them mostly through food, obviously. Mm -hmm. Most of our minerals coming from food. But some waters have them in such high amounts that they have an impact on your body. And that is for me a very cool thing. So I realized I wanted to give my guests an option of different TDS levels. And that stands for total dissolved solids. Or short so, for titties. Correct. <laughs> We're well, we going back to the over 18 podcast, obviously, what actually this episode is all about. What it sounds you started like. it off in Playboy, so, my friend. Um, my dear mother from Jordan, I think now it's the time to shut off the podcast because <laughs> we might be getting into other stuff. So we'll see, huh? No, but you get it. TDS, total to soft solids. And this is the fun part again. Here in Germany, people know the importance of minerality. Mm -hmm. In America, they know the importance of electrolytes. What is actually just a fancy word for minerals? or salts, whatever you want to call it. Is it really just it a is, fancy word for minerals? Magnesium is an electrolyte, is a salt, and is a mineral. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Calcium, the same. Sodium, the same. So You're kidding. It's so funny when you hear people going in America to the store, and they're saying, I hate Dasani, because they're adding salt. <laughs> but then they're <laughs> buying smart water for the electrolyte level. So both water have exactly the same... TDS level, the salt, mineral, or electrolyte, whatever you want to call it, yeah. it's both 28. Dude. So, and that brings me to the point that I want to bring awareness to water. Yeah. That you as a consumer cannot fall for the marketing lies of American water brands anymore. That's pretty yeah. much my job these days. You were the, yeah, you were the first person who ever, uh, that I ever like listened to who ever said anything negative about smart water because it's marketed as such a good water for you and everything. And I drank it a lot in college, yeah. you know, but then now I, I learn actually it's kind of a scam. Let's be <laughs> honest. Smart water has been famous because Jennifer Anderson promoted it. And she did a great job. Don't I didn't even know she did. Wow. I think she did a great job to promoting this. It was very famous, again, like for 10 years ago. She had it in her hands. She did for, I think, 10 years as well. Like she was their spokesperson for Smart Water. Oh, okay. It's owned by Coca Cola. I heard mm -hmm. this is a company who sells on a regular basis water pops. I'm not familiar with Coca Cola, obviously, but like I, I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> you might have heard it's, a little bit about it. It's kind of like a brand who sells coke so but, but like you started you started googling when that when that proposition came to you and like what were your first uh st like you know did you already have a, a developed palette from wine where you understood how the water differences should taste yeah. or did you have to learn these no i like things? wine obviously because my father is in the wine industry so i was exposed to wine tastings all the time oh, okay when you're working in a restaurant for many years already because into like i started my apprenticeship in 1997 so i already had a lot of years in under my bell pretty much I was seven so years to, old. <laughs> to work in a Michelin Lasta restaurant. So yeah. in 2005, I was the general manager there. And when you're a GM of a Michelin Lasta restaurant, you better know your wines too. And let me just take a pause there because also I know people listening don't know this. I mean, everyone in Europe will, but maybe someone like my mom won't know. Like a Michelin star restaurant, maybe the term sounds familiar, but it is extraordinarily difficult to not only just Correct. get one Michelin star and to hold this and to hold it because it's challenged every year. Yes, right. Yes. But to get two or even, Oh my God forbid three. Yeah. This is like, crazy. I think I've heard, um, basically what that means. It's the, it's the highest quality rated thing pretty much on the planet. Correct. 
um, very hard to hold, all-star chefs, all-star staff, everything is, is perfect, very expensive normally. And I've heard that um, Michelin chefs kind of hate getting three because the pressure is now, so extraordinarily high. And now high. it can get just the downside. Like It can only go down. There's no more, it cannot go up, it can yeah. just go down. Yeah. So a three star is tough. And a good friend of mine is a three star Michelin law chef in Berlin. Really? He's the first Michelin law chef staff in Berlin for three stars. How, how old is he? Uh, he's my age. He's a little bit older than me. He's like maybe 50 now. Wow. And he holds the three stars now since several years. It's Dude. really fascinating. I'm what gonna, was his uh, reaction? I'm going to go and, and visit him and I'm, I'm, I'm excited because nobody had him under the radar that right. he's going to be the first three star. What's the style of food that he does? He's like, yeah, Berliner regional kitchen, I would say, but so always with international of, uh, influence. So, what kind of dishes do you know? I haven't been to his restaurant for many years. Okay. I'm not in Germany anymore. True. Like, yeah, live, that's true. I, I dragged you Angeles. back. I dragged you yeah, back. Yeah, I know. I, I live in Los Angeles and I have nothing to do anymore with, with Germany. Yeah, um, you said you hadn't been in Munich in 25 correct. years. That's correct. Great. I mean, you're from the north. Which I'm from is the a, north. It's, it's untypical for me to come to your uh, to Munich anyhow. Yeah. But my last time, it has to be at least 25 years. That's at so crazy. Because I can't even reckon. I, like, I would not remember the day when it was. I was last in Munich. I know I was at the Deutsche Museum. So it has to be in school, maybe. So it might be even longer than that. I wanted... It might be even 30 years now. Oh, my God. Wow. Um, this is crazy because you're only 38, but I wanted to yeah. ask, <laughs> <Love to know. laughs> brown hair, super ripped. Come on, man. You're drinking the fountain of youth over there, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, maybe. But I wanted to, uh, <laughs> I wanted to ask like, you know, you make the menu, what's your first glimpse into a different, you know, career path or life path from this, uh, water menu, water sommelier position? Like where did things, what was the first thing where you're like, oh, something's changing? Yeah. It, it started already in Berlin because then when I realized we had the water menu in place, we had 40 different waters. So when I said like, we have Jesus. to do it like right away, like that was my biggest water I ever created actually, was my first water menu. All my other water menus were around always 10 to 20 waters. But this one was the biggest one and the first one, 40 different waters. And my sommelier, I had a wine sommelier as well on my side and we started to taste different waters to wine and realize that the wine suddenly tastes differently just based on the water you're drinking right next to it. Not mixing it. Oh, wow. Just that your palate runs suddenly different when you're drinking the right water to your wine. A wine suddenly can be so much more smoother, can be so much more fruit forward just based on the water right next to so it. So you were not just pairing w uh, water with wine, but water with the meals. Correct. Wow. So for me, it was interesting that it was not just giving an option on water. No, I can actually make your food and your wine and your cocktails taste better. That was for me the fascinating part. And I didn't know that before. That was literally learning by doing. First, it was the idea of options. Then I realized, okay, there's a serious like component to it. Not besides by the option. For people who don't want to drink or want to have something else besides the regular brand, what they can find in every restaurant. So this idea of I can enhance the experience by just water was for me fascinating. And then the media started to pay attention of this crazy German guy in Berlin. Yeah, what was the first like media? It was like literally like small little magazines who like from Berlin, like a regional magazine who said like, oh, that's kind of cool. You're having a water menu. And then RBB, like one of the regional Zen, uh, TV channels of, of Berlin came and said like, oh, we would love to do some sequence with you. You at the beach drinking different waters with one of our guys. Mm -hmm. And from there, it started like this snowball effect. Like suddenly from a southern part of Germany, a TV station came and said, oh, we would love to tape something with you. Then the first international TV stations came to Germany, to the restaurant and said like, oh, that's kind of cool what you're doing. We would love to do a little sequence about you. And then tons of magazines. And then in 2010, I was on vacation with my now wife in Los Angeles. And I used to live already in Los Angeles in two, uh, 19 of 2000 and in 2003. So mm -hmm. it was like back forth, back forth for me. Mm -hmm. So I was there in 2010 on vacation to just check it out for my wife to showcase her like, look, this is where I used to live. Los Angeles, how cool. Yeah. But when I was in LA and I was talking to my wife and we were sitting at the beach saying, man, it's pretty warm here for sure. People love to drink water. Maybe I should go over here. Like dollar sign eyes. Like ching, Yeah, ching, and it was ching, not ching. really about dollar sign. It was more <laughs> no, about I'm kidding, like, I'm kidding. like, what can I do in Germany to be more recognizable? And I realized, I think I did everything what I could achieve. There in, in this Germany. country, yeah. in Germany already. Yeah, you could see an audience yeah, there. Yeah, so for me, like, it's 
I have it there, but now America is a totally different beast, obviously. Yeah. And it's not like that everybody's waiting of you in, Germ- in in America as well. So it's like, it's not that easy. Right. Like, I had a very tough time in the beginning. Sure, sure. So back and forth, back and forth. And then I realized, okay, let's just do it. So in 2011, I I gained access to an O-1 visa, external ability visa for my knowledge of water. I'm the only one holding this currently. Really? On this planet. I'm the only person who has an O-1 visa for that. Wow, <laughs> so that's nobody unbelievable. else has that. Wow. So I gained access to this. I went to America and I started to work in a cool, fun restaurant. It's called Race and Stark by the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. And obviously I wanted to start a water menu. Sure. And I crafted a water menu. I had to fight for it because all my employees and especially my director of operation and my purchasing director said, this is completely insane, Martin. Uh, American people do not buy bottled water in in, in restaurants. They're going to have their tap water for free. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And you're like, I beg to differ. I sing, <laughs> hold my beer. Like, <laughs> hold my hellis. Correct. <laughs> let me let me see how we can do this here. Yeah. So I, Also, the, the interesting thing about that is uh, if you're British and or foreign, Americans will listen to you instantly. Yeah, I know. And this was obviously, <laughs> it helped. I know, no, I'm, I'm totally with you, Jordan. It's so true. It definitely helped that I have a German accent. Totally. Absolutely. As, 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 I, I would mean, at not least have at, been... At least at first, because you obviously have to know what you're talking about. Yeah, but bit, even but... now, I still think, because I see this sometimes in the comments, saying, God, I'm so happy that my water somebody is German, because I would not believe you anywhere. So. Yeah. They, can, they, so, they get this feeling of like, he's really a scientist. Correct. He wears this, the lab coats, this idea, you know? This idea of foreign yeah. and then German, mm-hmm. because we like to over-organize everything. Like, he wouldn't be, lie to me. He's German. Correct. And we, we, we like to over-educate ourselves as well on topics. So I totally get it. So it definitely helped me that I have the accent. Yeah. And I'm happy to still have the accent. Yeah. I mean, John, so many years. Of course. Yeah. I mean, John John Oliver makes that joke all the time on his show about like, uh, he could be saying anything, but because he says it in a British accent, people are like, wow. Yes. feel really educated. It definitely helps. (laughs) Yeah. So I crafted this first water menu and it was, we, we sent out a press release and two weeks later was national news. And I had no clue why. Because for me, it was just like, I want to give options to my guests in the restaurant. It was like German fraud scams but customers at local restaurants. Not restaurant. that, but it was, it was not just positive. <laughs> I'm just I kidding. had some very intense first like media. Appearance. Some criticisms. Oh, absolutely. What were the people, critics like? People said like, this is crazy. This is just a rich people thing. This is so bad. People, people don't have access to clean, safe drinking water. And he has a water menu. How crazy mm. and bad that is. Uh, when I tell these people, um, especially why I'm doing this, because my big red, like line, what I always said in my way of creating the water menus is to actually bring water, like value back to water. Because mm-hmm. I know that many people don't have access to clean, safe drinking water, but when we don't talk about it, we will forget about it. Right. So by creating a water menu, we start to talk about water. We start to realize that water has value because you see all the different stories where the water is coming from. Yes, obviously different price points as well, but I always have in my water menus as well the tap water for free. And it's the same page. We're treating tap water exactly the same way than a bottled water. So for me, it's not just about making money with bottled water. I serve you tap water for free and I will do exactly the same what I would do with bottled water. I will tell you a story where the tap water is coming from, what's in it. It's all the same for me. I'm not a bottled water sommelier. I'm a water sommelier. I like so that. So for me, water in general brings value to the table, not just bottles. And you feel that people who get into your niche or like discover you online uh, sometimes confuse you with like health guru. Yeah. Things like that. What's what's a, a great, like what's one of the biggest misconceptions people have about you as a person because of what you do with water. I was on a podcast recently and this podcast is all about nutritionist and be healthy and going to yoga every 24 hours and all this kind of, and nothing wrong about yoga people. Like I'm, I will not judge you. Like when this is good for you and you can meditate and breathe. Great. It's just not my thing. Mm-hmm. Like Me either. <laughs> I don't, I don't need it. I don't need it in my life. I feel very comfortable with myself. I know who I am. Yeah. I don't need to find myself. Yeah. Like it's all good here. Yeah. Like it's so German of me again. Like Germans <laughs> yeah, maybe can, cannot really like, 
But like, why would you wonder when there's no reason to wonder about correct. anything? Correct. Like, <laughs> I know who I am. Why I need to find myself? I could now. use like, this time to make sport. Yeah, it's like, I'm here. <laughs> like, I know where I'm sitting. Like, I don't need to find myself. <laughs> exactly. I know the finding myself is on a different level for them. But again, it's fine. I'm always saying, like religion, when it helps you, great. Right. Don't force me to do this stuff as well now. Sure. Then it's a problem for me. So I've been on this very healthy podcast. Mm -hmm. And on this podcast, I said that, first of all, coffee is not dehydrating. That was the first shock for a lot of people. They mm -hmm. could not handle that comment that I pulled this off. Right. And they, I just immediately, that recently. they immediately attacked me for that. And said, like, this is so wrong, Martin, that you said this. How can you say, how dare you can say this? You think because that's a fact. It was an American podcast, huh? Yeah, it's just, it's a fact that <laughs> they coffee don't go, is actually not dehydrated. They don't go, hmm, let's have a dialogue about that. See, yeah. you know, where'd you get that information? They go, don't you ever. And it's so <laughs> funny because like, yeah, obviously when you would just drink coffee, that's a problem for your body. But the one or two cups in the morning actually adds on to your hydration because 95 or actually 98% of your coffee is water. It's water. So there's more water in coffee than you can actually pee out. That's just a scientific fact. We don't need to discuss that. Right. And people can just can't handle that. Because they've been brainwashed. The rumor is that it, yeah, it's a rumor diabetic. and brainwashed that coffee is bad for you when you drink it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. When you would just drink coffee, it's bad for you. But it's totally fine to actually drink a cup of two. Yeah, it's fine. Of course, of course. There's nothing wrong about this. So that was the first like, <gasps> how, can, how dare you can say this on a podcast. How did you, were you confident from the get-go about your um, beliefs? Or were you a little worried in this American culture of like pointing fingers and raising voices that when you challenged them on a belief uh, and they got aggressive with it, were you a bit worried of like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to stick nah. my ground on this. No? no. <laughs> that was because, no, was because I was studying and, and reading so much about my topic that I know what I know. Right. So it, for me, it, when they come to me with all their like, but this is petty thing and why? When I'm asking them why? Yeah, because we all know this. This petty thing. Oh, that's your argument because we all know. Yeah. That's your argument. That's your scientific fact. And then I can pull my facts, and this is what I do in a lot of my videos. When it comes to this debunking stuff, this right. is like my main focus mostly now these days yeah. on my channel, that I'm debunking stupid influencers. I'm sorry, pardon my English, but they are stupid influencers. They just they want are. to make You're money. They are. You're educating, yeah. I'm educating, and they hate me for that. Because they think I attack them personally, on personal levels. I yeah. don't do this at all. I'm just debunking their myth. There's two... Speaking of that specifically, there's two... Uh, water companies I wanted to ask you about. One for sure is a very exciting video of yours that I think I watched two or three times. And the other one, I don't know if you've made a video about it, probably. Uh, one is, uh, well, one. what was the beer company that made this? Um, not beer. Not beer. Let's talk about that first. So I, I saw this video many times. They even so sorry for him. This, this is exciting. So there's a company that, you know, basically tried to, you know, uh, Jump on the back of Liquid Death's Correct. mega success. He even said this in the in an uh, interview. So it was like my first Piggyback, approach to Piggyback. this. My first approach, even like that I knew this company existed, was through an interview that the COO gave in a magazine or something that he said, oh, Liquid Death, and we want to create the new Liquid Death, pretty much. Yeah, we I mean, want to recreate the... the yeah, we want to put ourselves on the bandwagon of Liquid Death. Yeah. That they, yeah, it's this company, you know, new founder basically tries to compete with this hyper successful canned water company, Liquid Death, which this is the other one I want to get into with you a little bit. Uh, but this, there was a video you did where the, you know, the person comes out on TikTok or whatever, talks about their product and you, your videos are usually like splicing in your opinions to each statement that they give Correct. and kind of making your own um, video opinion based on that. And they didn't like what you said. And I wanted no. to tap into, so, you know, when you look at a product like that, you had issues even with how the can sits, how it tastes, um, if it's boiled tap, like uh, with specifically not beer, uh, you know, if you remember everything, what were some of the main issues you had with this and why you felt it was important to educate people on it? Because it was, you could feel it immediately that this was just a very cheap uh, idea of copy and paste and with death. And Liquid Death really did a great job because they are hitting themselves on all cylinders. That's the reason they're so successful. So even the whole marketing of Liquid Death is like this underdog be so different than any other water companies out there because all water companies are just talking about health and beauty. And Liquid Death started to talk exactly about the opposite. And the idea of Liquid Death is actually death to plastic. 
Mm-hmm. That's the name. Murdering for thirst it. as well. Murdering thirst and death to plastic. So this is where liquid death from the name standpoint comes from. So this not beer guy literally took a Budweiser can. Yeah. It looks like a Budweiser can. Same colors and everything. Same colors, everything. Even the Budweiser is a slightly better red color than the... Because it looked cheaper than a... I put this on the video. Yeah. It looked cheaper than a Budweiser. So they even mocked off the Budweiser can in a bad way. And then calling it not beer. Yeah, really brilliant name. Huh? What um, amazing. Imagine going it's to a, a bartender. Bad name. Yeah. Imagine going to a bartender and saying, I want a not beer. They were saying, you want a non-alcoholic beer or what do you want? Yeah. Nobody would say this is a brand. By liquid death, everybody knows immediately what that is. Yeah. But by not beer, that just can be everything. Imagine it's a crowded with music like, a beer, got yeah. it, you know. Not beer, what? <laughs> like you want, what? Like this is what's, okay. It's so a bad name, I, yeah. I ordered myself this water and I realized it's double the price than liquid death. <laughs> Think about this. What's the size difference? Like the size is, is no, it was like for, from, a, from a size standpoint, it would be then the same, but double the price. Okay. Literally double the price. Okay. So I said, like, really, like, that's crazy. It's double the price. Then I looked into the company, obviously. So where's they sourcing their water? So I went to the homepage. The homepage, very strange. For example, they're saying on the homepage, we're the only water company who do not support terrorism. <laughs> How can you say that <laughs> as a water company? And I was like, that's strange. Artsy Fartsy Immigrants is the only independent podcast that does not support terrorism. Like, think about this. Like, you're putting this on your homepage? <laughs> Who says that shit? Then you see a video <laughs> where they're literally littering the beach with their cans. You see this on their video. <laughs> they're breaking their cans down in a like, cowboy boot. And and they're littering the beach. My God. And then this not terrorism, like it gives me MAGA vibes. Like it gives something was weird. Like something was political weird from them. Like very strange. <sighs> so I made this comparison video. I saying, okay, yeah. let's let's do and you, it. Because yeah, you cracked down every Your aspect. CEO told me yeah. like you're you're better than liquid death. So let's do this. So the first can I had, uh, I bought myself a six pack on Amazon. I spent tons of money on that shitty water. And the first can was broken. It didn't stand well. Right. That was a, there was a, problem with that can yeah so quality control on their side was bad yeah because how this made this can into my into my pack yeah it was already bad sorry that thing was there no but that's showcase that's important yeah i put it in there in that video so i put liquid death and side by side side by side and obviously they're using tap water they're like filtering tap water where's their tap water coming from i have no clue They they don't even care i think they're even saying like we don't we don't care and that's the fun part because the thing <laughs> is, cool. the thing is, so I made this video. Obviously, the CEO didn't like that, and this video was okay in views. I think hundred thousand views or something. It was like I liked it, was it a lot. Yeah, crazy, but it was a good amount of views. It attracted views. So the CEO, who was like this twenty-one-year-old frat boy, I have no clue that he is the CEO because I didn't know. He looks he's pretty young looking. Yeah, he looked very young. So he made a video, a reaction video to my video. On his private TikTok. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, when you're a company and an influencer or like a content creator criticize you, you should not criticize the influencer. That goes always the wrong way. It's very Trumpy. It looks pretty bad. Yeah, you should not do that. You should maybe listen to it or not react at all. Like very big companies don't react to my videos. Of course. They're like, shit. He, he owns me. Because he gives you more traction. Correct. He knows better. He just spits facts out like, we should shut up. Mm-hmm. especially because I'm fact-checking everything what I'm saying before yeah. I'm putting out a video. So I know exactly what I'm saying there. Yeah. So, <laughs> but he had obviously a problem with that. He didn't like that. And it's so funny because I went to his LinkedIn page. He had another argument with a, a creator of like branding. And this branding creator said as well, like, oh, that's a markup, just like a very cheap version of Liquid Death. It doesn't fly in the marketplace. And this, the CEO went crazy about them as well. So he clearly has a problem with saying criticism in general. And for sure it has something to do because it feels like, I don't know the personal, obviously, lifestyle there, but I saw his TikToks earlier. He was always on some yachts with some girls. Clearly there's money involved from his parents. Okay. So it feels like the parents have money. Uh, he got a million dollars from his parents to say, like, have fun. And for sure, his father will always say, good boy, good boy, you're a good boy. He never had any criticism in his whole life. And now he created a brand, what is a shitty brand. 
And obviously my job is to showcase that. That's my yeah. job. Yeah. That's just my you know, job. Something I like about, uh, you know, you're reviewing uh, philosophy, which is the correct one to have. But like, I like this about uh, also Marcus Brownlee and uh, Keith Lee, mm -hmm. um, a couple other people. But like you three came up first in my mind as like, you review very different things. For those who don't know Marcus Brownlee, maybe the most famous tech reviewer yeah, on definitely. earth. Great review. Great. Very well so, done. so diligently honest and yeah. so personally, like morally pure yeah. in a beautiful way. And Keith Lee also like will not be influenced by money machines like Mr. Beast or someone. If they don't like their product, they will just say, this sucks. It's not good. Correct. Um, and same for you about water companies. If they send you something, you don't believe in it or you don't like it, or you can tell that it's a hoax. You will say that you won't be influenced by money. Correct. And I think you have to have like, I know we talked about this word pure, but like you really have to have like this, this diligently honest and trustworthy reviewers who cannot be influenced by a brand who wants to work with them because otherwise the consumers will not trust you anymore Correct. and they won't know what to believe. And that's so important. I and think. this is a sad part. What I feel like why I hate the word influencer, because there's so many influencers out there who just promoting stuff these days. Yeah. They have no clue what they're actually promoting. Yeah. They have no clue. I had to call out another, I don't, I don't know his name, but he has like reddish hair. He's a very big influencer as well, who does all this review videos on TikTok, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I saw him several times now. And he made a comment about a reverse osmose water system. And he made a, a, review, what, a what water system? A ver, reverse osmosis. R-O. Reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis. Okay. Yeah, a reverse osmosis it's system. A, it's tough to say. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a tough word. R-O water. So he made a review about this. And then he said, because by RO water, what a lot of people don't know, it's a membrane where water been passed through. And the membrane is very, very tiny and thin that a lot of water cannot actually been pushed through there. And it goes immediately down the drain. So your water bill will rise immediately when you're using a RO system at your place. A lot of people don't know that. No. So he reviewed this RO system and he said to this wastewater, oh, this is the water for the poor people. And that was not okay for me. What? And I went nuts. Because this is for me like so bad to say something that bad in a review about what is a human right. And you're telling me that the wastewater is for the poor people. And he reached because I went ballistic on him. Because I was like, I was so upset. Dude, yeah. I was upset. Because yeah. now we're talking about like, this is not cool. It's not fun. Oh, I wanted to make a joke. He said, that's not a joke. No, it's sorry, not a not joke. joke. No, not at all. It's not a joke to me. When you talk about wastewater and you think this is the poor water for the poor people. That's, di that's despicable, that's dude. Disgusting that's disgusting That's horrible, to me. yeah. That's disgusting. I'm sorry, that's disgusting. There are certain lines for me like, no, you cannot, you cannot make fun of that. It's the same with the Holocaust. Sorry, you cannot make fun of that. Make mm -hmm. fun of Hitler. I think it's important actually to make fun of Hitler. Absolutely. To, to, it's to, absolutely important. This is the only independent podcast that makes fun of Hitler. No, but like to showcase this evil, crazy, insane person, to showcase him as a gay guy because he would hate it so much, it's exactly the right approach. Yeah. To like kill him with, with this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. But to like making jokes of the Holocaust, for example, yeah. that's just not okay. It's just not okay. You cannot make a joke. Some things that. are just untouchable. Correct. Yeah. You can't. And this is the same for me when it comes to water rights and people don't have access to clean, safe drinking water because I fight for that through my water menus. I give money as well to Viva Con Aqua. It's a non-profit organization out of Germany. Here I support them since many years. Mm -hmm. They're great organizations. I love them to death. They're amazing. And they're doing really good stuff. So for me to to see an influencer talking about uh, wastewater and poor people was just like sick. And yeah. he reached out to me and he's like, oh, oh, I didn't mean that. I thought it was a joke. He's saying, no, but please be better. huh? Because yeah, just be joke. better. Yeah. Be better. This is not cool. And hopefully you're learning from this expertise. And this is the same with the not beer guy because yeah. this guy clearly did a second video on his TikTok and then wanted to debunk the water sommelier. Yeah. And when you see that video, mm -hmm. it's so sad. It's like, I feel so pity for him. But obviously I had to react. Yeah. So I, again, my Martin Reese's style, I took his video and broke it up in yeah. all the little sections again. And I comment to every section he had. Yeah, I like how, I like how you do it. You yeah. really like cut every statement Correct. and like give it a chance and to I breathe. Don't, and I don't delete anything. I'm right. just using the whole video because I think it's important that the audience sees the whole video as well. Yeah. So I'm not like on purpose, like maybe deleting some stuff where he's right, right. or something. You're keeping it transparent. I keep it yeah. transparent. I take the whole video. I'm just 
taken it up that I can reply, reply immediately to his statement. And his statements, SR Water Company, think about this, says, mm -hmm. SR Water Company, we should not care about water. He says this in his video. And people were like, what? You're a CEO of a water company and you think water is not important? It's all marketing? What kind of water company are you? Water's for the poor people, Martin. Is this crazy? <laughs> like, think about this. And obviously this video went super viral. Yeah. Went so much more yeah, views, that one's views pretty, that's awesome. than the first one. Yeah. Then the YouTube audience started and there's several big YouTubers who pulled that video. Oh, awesome. And said, how can like... How a German water boy uh, destroys an American company. Pretty Hell much. These yeah, are the dude. videos. And again, I don't want to destroy anything. I don't want to kill people. This is not my job. I'm just bringing awareness to people. But when they like, when they are playing stupid, I'm sorry. I just showcase them how stupid they are. I think yeah, you do, and you do a good job of it. And that's that's what I do then. And this is the same with this Kengen people, this yeah. ionizing multi-level marketing people yeah. who are making outrageous videos, who have no clue what they're talking about. Like literally no clue. They're going to this boot camp, in 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 their training. It's like a cult for me. This, this Kengen people are a cult. They're going into their boot camps. They're getting brainwashed. Mm -hmm. What they have to say because they're all saying the same shit. And they're all lying the same stuff. Yeah. They're all lies. Because, no, it's not a medical device. That device is not a medical device by the FDA approved in America. It's even forbidden by law to say that. They're just blasting it. And in medical law in Japanese, it's a medical device under the Japanese law. And when you're asking these people, what is it actually entails? What is a medical device? Right. They cannot answer that. Because they have no clue because it's not been trained right. in their boot camp. But I checked it up because I have friends in Japan and I called them up. He's saying, can you please find out for me what is a medical device in Japan? Do you know what a medical device is? A surgical glove is a medical device. Uh, the, the, the medical table where you get, like the surgery table is a medical device. The, oh. the scissors where they cut you open is a medical device. So medical device under the Japanese law just means it's safe for use has nothing to do with health benefits. Oh. It's just, it's approved from a standardization standpoint to make sure, yes, you're allowed to use it in surgery or to use it in a hospital or something like that. Okay. But that does not entail any health benefits. So what medical device under the Japanese law means, this machine will not blow up in your face. Right. That's right. all what that means. That's crazy. That it has they, nothing to do about the water quality. full liberty with that then. Yeah. On that note, on that note, uh, what I'm going to do here, um, so I'm going to take, we can keep everything rolling, but I just want to take a short little PP break. And then for those who are listening, this is a very good moment, a very good reason to switch over to the YouTube video. If you haven't already done it, if you're already watching, I love you and I can smell how beautiful you are. Um, what we're going to do as, after this little short break is uh, wanna, I want to come back, talk about just a couple of people that we have in common. Lovely Christina P., um, you know, you, I don't know Tom personally, you know, Ethan, stuff like that. I'm gonna talk about some of these people just briefly. And then we have prepared, uh, an assortment of waters from right here in Germany. We're going to go through them with Martin, taste a few, try and break down the differences, talk about the, uh, um, the total dissolved solids. solids and the mineral count and how that affects the taste. So we'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. I've peed. And now just before we jump into tasting some beautiful waters, I did just want to briefly... Uh, mention a few people that we, I mean, th I wouldn't say have in common. There's really just the one that we have in common. But it was great. I walked in here and I saw so, uh, right away Christina P up there. And it's great to see. Yeah. For those who, who listened to the show or, you know, uh, maybe saw the interview on YouTube uh, back in, I think it was March or April. I did the uh, an episode of um, Your Mom's House, um, not Your Mom's House, uh, Where My Mom's At with Christina P. And um, uh, I've been a long time fan of Tom Segura as a comic. I have his book and uh, Christina as well. She's great and um, was very, I mean, by, by crazy circumstance and luck invited to be on her show and had a really great time in Austin earlier this year. And th this funny little connection I have with Martin, um, which is so surreal now to have you here in my, in my home, is like... Seven years ago or something, I was listening to Tom and Christina's combined podcast, Your Mom's House, which is a big show, big show now. And uh, I was listening to it, like burning through old episodes. It was so funny. I was working at this Grundschule here in Munich, just mm -hmm. like, you know, cranking out the hours and just laughing all the time, like stocking books in the kids' library and stuff. 
and uh, one episode, one random day, I hear this voice, this guy's voice, and it's just it stuck with me. And I thought, oh, he's so funny and engaging, and man, he's so passionate about water. That's so crazy. And then uh, you know, cut to like years later, I'm going through social media, and I guess because I had followed or had some sort of you know contact with Christina or Tom or their team. Uh, the algorithm showed me one of Martin's videos and I was like, oh my God, that's the same guy. That's mm -hmm. the same guy I heard years ago. He's this water sommelier and it was like all these little pieces of memories coming together. And then to top it off, I go to be on Christina's show, which is linked in the, in the show notes if you haven't seen it. And there's one moment where we even talk about Martin and I was like, you know, it's crazy. I think I'm, I think I even said I might see you later this year. Maybe we mm -hmm. didn't have a book yet or something, mm -hmm. but I was like, oh, you know, I'm, or we had just like made Instagram friends, you yeah, know, I was yeah, like, correct. oh, I, I linked up with Martin and that's so crazy. He was a guest and now I'm here. And it was just like this small world feeling every, all the pieces coming together. And now you're here. And I don't know, like I, I'm such a fan of her. She was so kind, so giving. No, they're both amazing. Oh my God. Like they're the nicest people ever. And yeah. when I see sometimes like bad comments or something, think you have no clue who these people are yeah. and why you like, why you're bashing them because you don't like their comedy style or whatever that is. I don't really like, get that. Like they can just not yeah, follow they it. They are both know? the nicest people ever because I've been twice on that podcast actually yeah. in your mom's house and both are so welcoming. I just saw Tom in a Costco because he's promoting his own vodka now. Mm -hmm. uh, what is really, really cool as well. And we connected again because I was literally at the gym and I saw one of his stories that he's in Los Angeles suddenly in a Costco. And this is, by the way, the Costco right next to my gym. And saying like, that is hilarious. I'm, I have to go over there. So I saw him and he's like, oh my God, Martin. And we, we, we talked a little bit and this is so nice too. Yeah, to see him succeeding and the same with Christina. Yeah. It's great. Have you tried his uh, vodka? The Not yet. I haven't, I haven't either. Yeah, yeah. I'm but, curious too, though. Yeah. I'd like to. But, but he's a really cool guy. And then like... In general, like comedy podcasts are hilarious. And uh, it's cool that you found such attraction with that because that's obviously how I originally found yeah. you. And it was like your mom's house podcast. And now I've been approached by the H3 podcast with Ethan Klein. And I have did, I think for two years ago, my first episode with them. And now I'm a recurring guest like once or twice per year. That's so I'm cool, man. I'm going to the podcast. Yeah. And that's such a great show. Ethan and Hila, they are both the nicest people ever. Yeah. And I know that Ethan can be very controversial. I saw people like fighting him and like saying like how can you even deal with this guy and he's so bad he's the nicest guy ever dude like he's brilliant he's very very smart both he, of yeah, them he, are very I, smart he's much smarter than i think he that his you know uh, not character but more than he lets on like oh he, absolutely he seems so smart no 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 and he knows he yeah. knows a lot of political stuff he knows like he knows he knows. I'm jealous he of knows how, how how calm and collected he is when he d debates people who have different beliefs. Yeah. You know, like, uh, obviously there's some guests he has on, like the fresh and fit one, you know, you're going into it as a fan of him, knowing, like being on his side of like, yeah, screw these like sexist, crazy yeah, people. Yeah. But sometimes it's a neutral discussion and they, the person who is of a different belief can be so attacky and he's just so collected. And yeah. I, I've always been sensitive and quick to yeah. lose you know, control. And I'm so jealous good, of that. And he's very good in debunking them, these people. And yeah. showcasing them why they are wrong. Yeah. With very easy facts. Yeah. And I think that is like what, what brings him the attention as well. And why people believe him so well. Because you can fact check stuff what he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It's that simple. And, he's, and he brings sometimes the conversations really to the next level. Especially for, I think, people who maybe are not familiar with some topics to really showcase them and break them down in a very easy way mm -hmm. to make it fun, entertaining, but still you're learning something. Yes, what exactly. What I think is great. That should yeah. be always in my belief. Yeah, we should always laugh and we're both doing the same. We're doing obviously funny content, but in the end, maybe there's something people can learn from it as well. Yeah. And you're trying to, I think, showcase the German culture a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're overdoing it, obviously. That's the whole point. Yeah. It's the same here. For me as a water swimmer, I have to overdo my gig as a water swimmer. And I know that not everybody likes me for that. I had some German people who say, like, oh, Martin, this is a little bit too much what you're doing there. He's, really? Some water company people saying, like, oh, no, we... Martin, I don't know. This is like, this guy is crazy. He's like, this is too much for them. Yeah, but that's the reason their water companies are very small and not really successful because they don't know what to do. They don't online. take the, yeah. Yeah, it's like, just be a little bit more minded, huh? Yeah. Let's go, guys. Dude, yeah. I really, I re yeah, I completely agree with that mindset. 
And yeah, I wanted to mention, uh, just mention these beautiful people that we've, uh, the strange little thread that we have from across the world since you live in LA and I'm yeah, living yeah. here. Me as an American in Munich and you as a German in LA, Correct. which is so funny. It's kind of crazy. You yeah. know, the, the title of the podcast is Artsy Fartsy Immigrants, and you're really such a pure example of that. Um, but without further ado, again, this is a great chance to hop on the YouTube video if you're not uh, watching already, but we're going to go through some waters here. Um, we went to a couple of different stores in Munich today, picked out a really lovely variety here. Um, I can follow your lead on this. You're the pro. If you, you know, if you want to break down, we can showcase it to the camera, what some of these are, what makes them different, and then you can choose a few that we can taste. So the first big difference, I think, when it comes to the American audience versus the European or German audience is we have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine glass bottles, mm -hmm. glass bottles, guys. Um, they are all between, I think, 45 cents and maybe a dollar ten. what I saw so far in the store. So cheap. Yeah. So They're cheap. They're like extremely cheap. We're talking about nothing is purified. We're talking about all natural uh, spring or mineral waters. Um, the big difference between spring and mineral water under the European laws, spring water means it has to come from a natural occurring spring source, like mineral water as well. But mineral water has to have at least 250 TDS dissolved, versus a regular spring water can have a, a TDS lower than 250. But you're not allowed to call it mineral water when it's low in minerality by the American law. Okay. Here in Germany, the law is slightly different. Uh, you can call a mineral water mineral water as well when it's even low in minerality, but it has to come from a natural occurring spring source. And there are very, very strict regulations here in Germany um, what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. So, for example, you're not allowed to filter these waters. They're all really? raw waters, pretty much. What was a big topic for several years ago in America. And people said, how can you drink raw water? This is bad. Water needs to be processed immediately. Uh, yeah, we I Germans, saw some things about yeah, raw water. We Germans yeah. would be all dead then now by this idea that raw water is poisoning because all our waters are actually raw water when it comes to the idea of uh, the conception of water in America. Um, the only thing what these water companies are allowed to do when it's called natural mineral water, they can extract iron because iron is obviously a mineral what makes water uh, slightly discolored, like rusty. Hmm. You don't want to have brownish water suddenly there because water, speak for yourself, oxygen, pal. Yeah, uh, <laughs> oxygen, water, and iron, rust. Huh? So you don't want to have there this in your bottles. You were not in the wild, wild west anymore. So we want to have our water like transparent. Yeah. Um, the second thing what they're allowed to do is extract or adding carbonation. And that's it. That's it. Okay. There's nothing else allowed to do with natural mineral waters in Germany. They're very, very strict, the regulations. Um, oh, 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 I wanted to ask you. Yeah. I just before I forget it, according to the drinking water ordinance, uh -huh. the water in Germany, as you said, must be clear, colorless, odorless, cool, flawless taste, which I think is a really specific way to say it, and without any health damaging properties. Uh -huh. I think also clear and colorless, probably could be the same word, uh, odorless, cool, which I think also cool is an interesting mm, like demand. Interesting and flawless because taste. odorless, there are some waters that have a very strong odor. There are it, some waters, especially where waters with a very high sulfur content. But sold in bottles? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. I mean, that's all the, uh, for those who haven't seen it, I'm going to put it in the show notes. Uh, he was a guest on Conan O'Brien. So you can see how lucky I am today to have him here. Uh, he tried this water that was very salty. Mm -hmm. down from Spain, from the little bit northern of Barcelona, TDS of 3,052. So when you think about these numbers, like a Fiji water for the American listeners has a TDS of 222, an EVR, what everybody knows, 340. So this one was... You say three, it's so pretty, Evian? 3,052. Oh, wait, That's Evian insane. water has 3,052? No, 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 Evian 350. Oh, oh, okay. 340. So the salt water was really... Yeah, so ten, almost in. 10 times more in minerality. So think about this. Obviously, that water has to be very intense. But it's an acquired taste, I guess, right? It is very... Yeah. Is it water, has over 1,000 yeah. milligrams of sodium dissolved. So therefore, it's Fuck. a salty. Fuck. It tastes like salty. It tastes like an aspirin but it, like, dissolved in water. But is, yeah, the Alka-Seltzer thing, right? Like, is it, but is that kind of water considered higher quality or like more, ooh, you That's know, prestigious or... I would not, like, again, 
all these waters we have here, they are the same quality for me. I don't, I don't, there is no best water. There is no better hydrating water. There's no overhydrating water. This is all marketing gimmicks from America. Okay. Don't believe all this BS. But in, it, it's just your passion to be able to decipher the, the differences, but there is no best or worst. It's, it's just very differences. Simple. Yeah. The best water is the water you will like the most. It's that simple. That's like the best that. water. I like that. It's the same with a car. It's the same with the house. It's the same with yeah. the city. It's the same with the states. Like, I, I don't understand this idea Like because I'm living now mostly in America. So my brain is already so Americanized. I don't understand this idea when Americans saying we're living in the greatest country on this planet. I was like, what? I mean, most of them haven't traveled outside how the States. How <laughs> can you like say that yeah. when you have no clue how other countries operate? Yes, like, that's a in huge Germany, topic you don't have to create a fund me page when you're getting cancer. You don't have to tell people not call an ambulance. Yeah. Yeah. It's very <laughs> strange. Yeah. I mean, um, that's so yeah. to tell me this is the greatest country. And again, I love America. I want to become a citizen even. Yeah. Like I'm that you, attached to You've lived the country. there, yeah, a very long time. But I know that every country has its up and downs. Mm -hmm. Germany has some very cool stuff, what I think is amazing in Germany, and some very bad stuff. I think it drives me nuts that still in big cities on a Sunday, you cannot buy groceries, pretty much. Dude, like, yes, this is okay. Quite, the, that's for me this insane. Was even, this was even in my stand-up show. Like, this is a big thing for me, the Sundays yeah. and the after 8 p.m. grocery stores. Correct. Like, it's for me like, I'm sorry. Like, put a, like, put a Berlin Späti, put it everywhere. Yeah. Put them every block in the country. Correct. But this is for me crazy. I'm that's, sorry. Yeah. When we're always saying we want to be, as Germans, we want to be... Uh, like Berlin, like one of the biggest cities on this planet or one of the most exciting cities. What is actually Berlin? Berlin is an incredible and exciting city. Yeah. Uh, but still, on a Sunday, uh, you're screwed yeah. when you want to have... Monday Sunday holiday. Sweets. Monday yeah. holiday. You're, you're fucked. That's pal. crazy. Yeah. So that's for me, like, that's insane. I'm sorry. But and that, it is. the church still has the power there to tell me, yeah, but we it's still for the families. Bullshit. How many people are working in the restaurant business? How many people are firefighters? How many people yeah. work in the hospitals? Like they're all working Saturday and Sundays. And I have to say, when I worked these kind of shifts in my restaurant business days, I actually liked that to work on Saturday and Sundays because first of all, the stores were closed. And I got all my errands done. Dude, and honestly, when everybody was working. I was a barista for years in the Sunday rush. Like, sure, it was tough, but that was where I made the best tips. Yeah. So you know? for me, like, I like to work on Sundays. So please don't tell me. And we have the division between church and state. This was exactly what I was just about yeah. to say. Like, why is this still a thing? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. It's only. I'm sorry. Literally, like, stores are closed on Sundays because Jesus doesn't want you to buy apples on Sunday. Yes. Like, um, I, don't, no. I don't get that. And get I had that. a big discussion with, with several people about this, and I made the decision for myself back in the days when I was still living in oh. Berlin. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. My phone was ringing just now. My bad. Go ahead. <laughs> and I made the decision to um, to not support the church anymore, to, like, not paying the taxes anymore. So. Uh, the the mem the automatic membership pretty much what you're getting when you're living in Germany and you have to pay taxes for the church you can cancel that yeah and I did that okay cool yeah I understand that so uh, but I just uh, before we take up too much of your time today I want to with all this in mind uh, we have all these beautiful bottles here that we collected today um, it would be cool if you could just with your professional insight like kind of briefly give small differences in in these like to the naked mm -hmm. amateur eye and then maybe you pick three from the selection and we do a little tasting. So what I already said, like it's glass bottles, what is really cool. Try to find the same uh, assortment in the grocery store in America. That's almost impossible. Because these days it's mostly plastic bottles. Yeah. And How then, does that affect the taste? Uh, it can affect them very drastically, especially when plastic bottles are considered in heat or sunlight. Mm -hmm. Then we have a problem. When they're like in a room temperature, like, or maybe cold in a dark room, nothing pretty much can leak out of these PET bottles, the plastic bottles, but heat is a problem. And you have no clue where this plastic bottle has been right. from the grocery store, from the shipping and all this kind of stuff. So that's an issue. And sometimes you can clearly smell and, and, and taste that yeah. this plastic taste. So glass is just the perfect container because it will not give anything to the water and nothing can go out. They're yeah. literally sealed. They're perfect. I tasted 10-year-old glass bottled water. was totally fine. 
nothing happened to these waters. Even there's expiration dates on the waters. On even on every water body, you have an expiration date. It's more about the container might be expire, mm -hmm. but it's not actually the water can expire because every water what we're tasting is billions and billions of years old. It's the water cycle. We have we have 325 million trillion gallons of water on this planet. We don't gain or lose water. Let me ask one, this is still on topic, and I keep delaying the tasting, and I'm sorry, but let me ask one more little niche question. Um, what is the difference between a contained glass bottle of water that's been in someone's attic for 10 years and what's known as still water, which is old water that's maybe like from a leaked, you know, like let's say, let's say like there was a factory and there was a flooding and then the factory was abandoned and this undisturbed water has sat there, even though it was originally rainwater or something, mm -hmm. it sat there, let's say for like uh, also 10 years. People, what's the difference between these two things and why is the glass bottle of water most likely far more safer to drink than this other water? Of course, um, in the glass bottle, there's no oxygen or something anymore dissolved. So the glass bottle is made up mostly with water and there's no bacteria can go in and out. It's Duh. completely sealed up. Duh, Jordan. Uh, okay, that makes versus sense. Versus yeah. an open container, we right. all know from water comes life. And yes, microbacteria is a thing. We all know that. Yeah. And microbacteria are as well in our air. So they will infiltrate into the water and then from the water can stuff grow. And obviously you don't want to drink that then anyway. Right. So you can spoil water very fast. Get these amoebas in your yeah. ears and That's nose. That's the reason and, as well. Yeah. A lot of water companies saying, please drink me in two or three days when you open the bottle. Yeah. Because they know as well. Even all these waters, what we're seeing here, when you would open the container and you would leave them here for a week or month, or two months, there was something would happen. Yeah, they're not safe to drink anymore at this moment. Oxygen does something, make something. Something seems like a very happen. obvious answer. I should have yes. thought of that. <laughs> it's the same with bread. It's the same with everything. So okay. it's unsealed and therefore things. So yeah. glass bottles, first of all, is yeah. amazing. Price points we already discussed as well. It's fucking cheap in Germany. Water yeah. is just cheap. Uh, it's crazy that you can get this amazing quality waters for such a cheap price. Yeah. When it comes to the label. Big difference as well, because in America, you will see all these waters from Smart Water, Essentia, Dasani, Aquafina, and all these brands not really telling you where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Guess why? It's tap. They're using tap water. It's fucking tap. It's literally they're using in, in the factory, wherever they're bottling these waters, they're opening their tap. It's tap water, <laughs> okay? It's tap water. <laughs> They're filling at least the tap. Maybe adding some electrolytes back to it. Then they call it electrolyte water. There's no regulations, by the way, how many electrolytes do need to be added by calling electrolyte water. Sounds illegal. So you can add one electrolyte and you can call it electrolyte water. It's insane. Completely that, insane. Yeah. The regulation is just insane over there. So therefore, big difference there. Yeah. We don't have, because we tried to look for it today. Yeah. We looked for a purified water brand. We did not found one. Yeah, that's true. Think we, about this. We went to a grocery store. We went to a specific drink market, which is a very German thing. Correct. And we went to a gas station. Yes. Three spots, not even one purified water brand. In America, it's the other way around. Yes. Try to find a glass bottle of mineral or spring water. You barely will find it. I've been to a store in Nevada. They don't even had a spring water in plastic. Mm -hmm. They were just purified waters. Mm -hmm. Just purified. That is crazy. That is crazy. So that's, that's crazy. a big difference as the well. A huge there. switch there, yeah. So that the quality is just different. Enormously different. All our water is coming from nature, pretty much. Nature water, cheap yeah. cost. Cheap cost, nature yeah. water, and glass bottles. Yeah. So what's, what what, really like, cool. what, what's the, a couple yeah. of classics that One stick out One more crazy to you? thing as well is yeah. when it comes to the glass bottles, when you look at the labels, on each label, you will see here the regular label. It says here, for example, Adelholz. So that's the name of the company. But when you look at the back label, huh? they actually have the water quality report written down on the back label. I would love to see that transparency in America because guess what? Water should be transparent. So why is the consumer not informed in America what's actually in the water? Yeah. So they're putting down the pH in America, what is completely nonsense to talk about because pH doesn't matter by drinking water. 
it's important for your pool quality and for yeah. your jacuzzi. Yeah. So water quality safety, yes. Yeah. But pH, this idea of this marketing line in America to say, but Martin, you can drink high pH water to balance out your acidic body. Completely bullshit. Well, dude, even like on the on the most basic basic level of a person who de who who just goes into a Walmart buys a drink at the checkout, when you see it like an Aquafina or a Dasani bottle, which you know people and most people I know from the states have done their whole lives, and you look at the back of that label and everything says zero, part of you goes, oh, of course it's water, yeah, you know. And you were the first person who showed me or, or you know educated me on the fact that like that's not good. Correct. You, you need there minerals. There should be actually Calciums, something in magnesiums. There. You yeah. need like water that's literally from a spring. Yeah. yeah. It's that it's very simple. And this is so cool to see. And I'm I'm amazed that literally every water bottle. You lit up like a like a firework yeah, at because, this drink market. Because yeah. it's required by law in, in Germany here, and every water bottle will showcase exactly what's in there. So this is really cool. So what do we have here? So yeah. we have a water Let's with it's very low, for example, in minerality. So TDS of 14. Lauritana, they're calling it the lightest water in Europe. Um, it's very, very interesting. It comes from northern Italy. Um, it's a great water for people who want barely any minerals, who want like a very smooth and light taste. Mm -hmm. Let's say it like this. Okay. So let's taste this together. Let's give it a crack What here. Lauritana is doing. Comes from an Artesian spring source. So Artesian means that the water comes out by themselves under pressure. So think about spring water comes out by gravity when like on the summit the rain comes down the water pass through the different stone layers and then it finds a stone layer where the water cannot pass through anymore and then it comes out by gravity from the stone layer into the ground by uh, artesian waters like this one is that means let's say two mountains and the valley so the water passes through from the two summits and collected themselves on an aquifer underneath the valley. And there's so much water coming from the mountains mm -hmm. still that the aquifer at one point will be built up too much water and it will find this way the other way around to go up by pressure. And then That's by crazy. themselves, it's coming and floating out like a geyser. And this is what Lauritana is, an Artesian water from Northern Italy. It's an Artesian water what comes out by pressure. Ooh, sorry, microphone. Cheers to you, Martin. Cheers. Very light indeed. So it's very, very light. S silky. Yeah, I think so too. It's a little silky, but... And that is the problem what I have with low mineral content waters. Think about it now. You just swallowed the water and it's gone. In your mouth, it's actually very dry now. Obviously, you had water. That's but a good point. But it's not like... It's not lingering in my mouth. Like, it's it's still, if you had a dry mouth, it'd still kind of be a dry mouth. It's still a dry mouth. That's interesting, yeah. And why is it like this? This is the Dasani effect, especially for the people in America, because they're always saying, oh, Dasani makes you thirstier because they're adding salt. No, this is a conspiracy theory, guys. The problem with Dasani is the minerality is so low, it's 28 TDS. This is 14, that's even lower than Dasani. This is lower than Dasani? Yeah. So the minerality is so low in Dasani and water is the universal solvent. It always looks for minerals. When a water is, I would always call it unbalanced, when a water has barely any minerals dissolved, it will find minerals somewhere else and it will find them in my saliva. So when I drink this water, it will pull minerality the from my saliva. water takes minerals from me? Yes. And then you have this dry mouth. Don't worry. Sounds like a science in, fiction It goes movie. into your stomach. And you will have the minerals again. But in the morning or in the in the beginning, you have this dry mouth feel. Why? Because it pulled out the, the minerals from the low. The minerality. water is taking minerals from me, from your saliva, not just from you. This water is fucking huh? done for, pal. <laughs> Sayonara, Laratana. Okay, <laughs> let's do now something. What is? I have to say, um, I think this is a little bit uh, gimmick. I like actually the company. It's called St. Leonards. It's a great water here for Yeah, Bavaria. tell us about the different uh, sun, yes. sun settings And on we this. both went to the store today and you said like, Martin, they are different labels and they have like, one is the sun, the like other they, one They all said natural. still, but they were slightly Correct. different somehow. They were all still waters, but the one had like here, the moon, uh, Mondquelle, the moon, for example. The other one said uh, Lightquelle or Lichtquelle. Mm -hmm. uh, and this means when they've been captured into the bottle. So St. Leonard's is saying, 
when they are filling these bottles under the full moon, the water has different energy than the water under the sun. I'm over again, like, again. No! <laughs> and this brings me to the topic of uh, religion again. When you believe in something and it helps you and you think this is a great thing, wonderful. I think from a quality standpoint, I love St. Leonard's. It's a great still water. Um, so I don't get the whole full moon water. Thing. I think it's, it's a brand. It must just be a brand um, thing. Huh? There's even one more crazier thing on this bottle because there's okay. a water crystal in the back label. And they're talking about... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're talking about this This crystal will talk to the water. What's in the water. And they will uh, uh, exchange energy now. Hmm. And this is for me a little hmm. bit too much. Um, so when it comes to this, and I see this in America as well, that people believe in crystals. And again, when you believe in something, good for you. But it's not a crystal, it's a picture of one. It's a picture of a crystal, but there are people out there who are thinking, and there's a guy, uh, Mr. Moto, who wrote books about it. He is the best thing out author uh, under the New York Times. Uh, he passed away for many, many years. He came from Japan originally. He wrote books about water crystals. And he said, when you talk to a water bottle, let's say like do, I'm doing this right now. I love you, my sweet, my sweet little boy. And now I talk very nicely to this water. You can freeze this water now in crystals and the crystals will be very beautiful. But I'm going to do this now. Hey, bitch, what's up? You, you ugly, disgusting water. Now the water is actually poisoning. And the crystals will not be beautiful. Now the water's is, got father issues. This and has is sex. what he believed. <laughs> and there are still thousands and thousands of people who believe in this completely nonsense. Obviously, it's completely nonsense. Did you? Was it like this Richard Linklater movie or something, Waking Life? Or was it? No, it was a, a different movie where they where they did the the thing about the yeah, like you basically barking at water or like being kind to it, and it would produce these different sort of molecule textures, Correct. like snowflakes. Yes, is that? I mean, is this that is science? exactly that? I mean, no, no, that, no, 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 it's no. not science. No, it's and it's debunked. Okay. Um, first of That's all, this, this Doctor Emoto, um, I don't want to even say he was a scam artist. He was just like. Uh, he showcased beautiful pictures in a book, but obviously has nothing to do with science. He was a storyteller. Yeah. I and mean, when he believed I mean, the in best that art, story, you know? because the fun thing is he could not replicate that. Yeah. He was oh, okay. not able to replicate it. He said it was this in his pictures and his books. Yeah, sure, I can take the most beautiful pictures and saying I just talked to the water nicely and these are the pictures I came up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all hearsay. But there was no scientific facts. He never was yeah. able to replicate this. He was offered $100,000 to replicate this. When I would be able to do that, I would give the 100000 Hell Trust yeah. Me. And he would for sure have done the same. He denied it. Who is that famous um, so, therefore, cynic? Who is that famous uh, magic cynic? Uh, Randy. James Randy. Correct. Yeah. He offered this to the Mr. Emotion. It was him. It was him. No, it was him. It was him. I have, a, I have an unbelievable amount of respect for yeah. James Randi. And he did that, and Mr. Couldn't Modo, do it. Uh, Couldn't no, do it. no, let's, let's not do it. No, because yeah. it was fake. Fake science. Yeah, dude. Clearly. It's not alternative science or something. No, it's just fake. So what should I expect from this? So this water has way more minerality. And when we're looking at the water quality report now, and obviously I'm old and my glasses are bad, but calcium is pretty high, magnesium is pretty high. So there's a way higher overall TDS. I don't know, because it doesn't say the overall TDS on this bottle, so I don't know how much exactly that is. But it's way higher than Lauretana, because when you see already 96 uh, milligrams of calcium, 35 milligrams of magnesium. So we're talking about it has to be at least 200 TDS, this water. At least. At least, uh, scientifically, at least 200 titties. <laughs> Okay, well, so this, this should leave more of a... Uh, um... Definitely more aftertaste. More okay. fuller, more texture, more stronger feeling. That's no joke. No joke. It's a bulkier water. Yeah, definitely. Immediately. This I'm is not like, even bullshitting you. It's so interesting. The The first one, the Lauretana, was almost like non-fat milk versus this yes. is like whole milk. From a texture standpoint. Dude, no shit. Like, I know that people are easily influenced by someone with an accent. <laughs> no, but <laughs> I'm always saying I'm people can the truth. taste the difference. I it, don't even have to convince no, but like, them. Everybody can taste the difference. It's actually like flavor, like taste or not, because we'll get into flavor, which is an interesting thing you said. Mm -hmm. But taste or not, it is a bulkier. It is a different consistency yes, completely, hundred percent, and it lingers way longer on my palate. Uh -huh. 
it stays on my palate. It's like swallow. It's like I mean, this sounds stupid because it's water, but it's almost like sw uh, swallowing a little balloon. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's almost and the other like water was like silk. Oily. Yeah, it's oily, dude. It's oily. This guy's onto something, people. This guy is on. But I like something. this. And when I think like when it's oily and this super smooth and round mouth, you think about like a very tannin rich red wine now. What is very harsh on your palate. When you drink this water right next to it, you will balance out the tannins. And your red wine will have more fruit complexity suddenly in your glass. That's this a, one. Yeah, definitely. That's a cool thing what happened to like really cool waters. They can actually pair waters with certain wines or dishes. And make them better. I find that extremely cool. Pairing waters with wines yeah, or with food. It's fun. Again, like I was just in New Orleans. Where you're coming from. There was a big convention for bartenders. It's called the Tales of Cocktails. And I did a seminar with Kate Gervin. She's considered the, currently like the top five best bartenders in America. She's incredible. She has in New Mexico the Happy Accident Bar. Like when you're in New Mexico, go there, guys. It's like an experience to go to her bar. And it's a fun bar as well. It's very, very like a really cool vibe but incredible good cocktails very nice balance and we did a seminar about the importance of water in your cocktails because it is important to use the right water yeah i think it makes a ton of sense it's like it's like saying earlier like about this, this uh Sang Lianz is really good I this like is really good i would so, say yeah let's talk let's one, what, yeah i was gonna explain high vasa and then let's, and then let's taste one more and then we can let you go what is very interesting because everybody knows gerald steiner so this is a very famous brand. That's the number one consumed brand in, in, in Germany. This is the number one consumed brand sparkling, in Germany. Sparkling, yeah, sparkling German water brand. That's the number one consumed sparkling Gerl water Steiner. in Germany. Gerold Steiner. Very famous. You can find it all around the world. Like really, like I saw it in China. I saw it in America. You have it in many stores in America. Oh, wow. You can find Gerald Steiner. But the classic one. So the full Sprudel. This one. Mm -hmm. They have it in America as well. In many, many stores. So they have... So you would say in, in a sense that this German brand has invaded uh yes other <laughs> so poor. i'll see myself out <laughs> so they have i'm in here with two germans by the way so these jokes are not landing <laughs> <laughs> they have another source in the same region under their portfolio is called sangero and this is their heilwasser Please explain. And this is something what you do what not have in America, what is even forbidden by law do, under the FDA. I didn't even know what this was until today. And this is interesting. So Heilwasser, because when you saw it, we, we talked about spring water, then we said mineral water, the next step. And in Germany, by mineral water, it ends in America. In Germany, we have the next step. And the next step would be Heilwasser. Heilwasser means it has to come from a natural occurring spring source. It has to be a mineral water because it has to have at least 250 TDS under the American law even. But Heilwasser has now the third, and this is the hardest structure. This is considered medicine under the German law. Okay, this is not regular bottled water. This falls under the medication law in Germany. And you can see the Arzneimittel number right here labeled, right there. There's the Arzneimittel middle number. My German goes bad and bad. Um, on the label. And then the back label reads like a medicine label. Because this is again considered medicine. State approved. Okay, but how and why and where do they serve it? So, this water you can buy in stores. Because we just bought it in a regular store for 70 cents per bottle. Yeah. Think about this already. So... Heilwasser has to meet certain criteria. What I said already has to come from, from a spring, has to have tons of minerals dissolved. And some minerals needs to be in high amounts that they actually have an impact on your body besides hydration. And this needs to be scientific proven by doctors to be then labeled Heilwasser. And this one, let's see. Well, I cannot read this. But for sure, there's calcium and magnesium super high. Let's check it out. Because it's, it will say it on the back label. The, uh, the ingredient list here. Yeah. And look at calcium or magnesium. I would Calcium's guess 331. That's already very high. Um, scrotum Sounds like scrotum. Interesting. Like calcium. What you said? 340? Uh, 331. 331. Think about this. A glass of milk is less than that. 
Jesus. Milk. Calcium level. So for people who are lactose Dude, that's intolerant, three three one comma zero. That's not even like behind the zero either. So this is like super high in calcium. What's natrium? So natrium is sodium. So one hundred and twenty one. So this can be a salty ass water. Yeah, one hundred twenty is not that bad. Okay. I think. So there are certain minerals dissolved in higher amounts, what makes this water a healing water. And when you read the back label, it will say it has something to do with your uh, digesting system. I think it's good when you drink this for your digesting and, and this kind of things. What's, uh, what's sulfate hydrogen phosphate? Sulfate. 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 Oh, sorry. Sulfate is one thing, and then there's hydrogen phosphate, right? Phosphate. Let's see. On this one, there's, yeah, sulfate, it says 34.8. Mm -hmm. And then directly under is hydrogen phosphate, which is phosphate. Phosphate. Nitrogen carbonate. Phosphate. Yeah. yeah. So it's very interesting to see to see this um, in the German supermarkets. Dude, this water, this this Mondkvelle, it it feels like a water you drink like on a vacation. You know, like imagine that you're like sweaty and like a button down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're yeah, having yeah. dinner and you're like you're a little sunburned. And you, you hear the the beaches, the water crashing on the beaches. You'll know what I mean. I love St. Leonard's. Oh. I will buy some bottles and bring them back to this to the States, actually. Because I think it's it's a very good water. This is like our version of Hot Ones, except things just cool down. <laughs> Correct. Oh, so it's sparkling as well. It's a sparkling. A natural occurring sparkling. They don't add the carbonation artificially to okay. it. Okay, how do you have naturally occurring sparkling So water? that happens in... I call regions, bullshit. In regions where they have old volcanic reactions, they are CO2 nestled into what? the stone. What? This is volcanic water? water? Yeah. So this is like, we have several of them. In Germany? Natural. Yeah, we, we had a lot of volcanics back in the days. The Kaiserstuhl is an old volcan. Get out of here. No? The Kaiserstuhl region is a very famous region. <laughs> Imagine the, I was the, like, get out of in here. In the Baden region. <laughs> and it's a beautiful mountain. It looks like a mountain now, mm -hmm. but it used to be a big volcano. Dude, I... Never would have thought that in my entire yeah. life. Okay, let's enjoy this. Let's so, try this, San dude. Gero. Cheers. Heilwasser. So we're drinking medicine right now. Mmm. That is saltier than I was hoping, though. Yeah, and you can taste it immediately. Woof. And it has like this. That's 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 this not bitterness as well in the aftertaste. Not directly pleasant, I have to say. But these are hell of us. Whew, that's normal. Man, I, I tell you what, if I ran into a store as a tourist and I was like, oh, sick, water, and then got this, I would be so pissed. <laughs> I'd be so pissed. There's a super, super viral video going around right now of a guy who was um, hiking in Switzerland. I did, I did a duet with it recently. And he's like, N he's like, not me stuck with two fucking liters of Sprudelwasser because I'm, I'm hiking and I don't speak German. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you go get this and no. you're like, no way, man. No, it's intense. It's I mean, clearly you know, intense. To be fair, though, to be fair to them, it tastes like medicine. Yeah. You know, a spoonful of sugar. But this <laughs> is the interesting part, guys. So the origin of medicine, what we know these days, actually started as bottled water. When you Google medicine, history of medicine, they will all tell you, yeah, it's Bath Town back in the days in Great Britain, where people went to the spa towns to, to um, get feeling better by drinking or bathing in their waters. And when people were too sick to go to the spa towns, they started to bottling their waters. And this was the first idea of medication. I just wanted the glass to be empty. So Whoa. bottled water is actually nothing else than medication. But now, two, three hundred years later, we're filling everything out. Huh? Go back to the gold, so the gold weird. standard here. Man, Martin, this is super fascinating, man. I'm, I'm so. And obviously, there are so many other great waters out there. So, like, there are over five thousand different uh, water brands. Final, final, so, final big question here, because a lot of a lot of the listeners of this, um, including family, are people who uh, live in the states. So, if you're, you know, traveling through, you go to like a Bucky's or a, you know, a, a CVS, a Walgreens, a Walmart. What are a couple of water brands you think are absolutely ace in terms of what they promise and what they deliver? So, first of all, don't think about the price. When a, suddenly a bottle is $3, that does not mean it's a better quality than a water that maybe cost you just a dollar. It's a myth. So please do not believe just by price points that you think a more expensive is automatically better. Yeah. It's not in America. Clearly not. So look at the labels. And it's not even the brand. It's about the label where the water is coming from. When it says spring water, then you know that water actually comes from a natural occurring spring. Like my food should come from a natural occurring farm. Chef, okay. Uh, or chef or something, correct? I don't want to eat highly processed food all the time. 
I want my food fresh from the market. Yeah. It's the same for me with water. I like my water. Like where I like my women. No, where mother, where mother nature is still intact, yeah. and brings me great water to a bottle, and I don't want my water coming from an industrial city like say Montebello, uh, in Los Angeles, where 14 million people pooping on it every day. Huh? That's an interesting, weird concept to me. Why I should buy that? But people are buying it. <laughs> Fair point. Um, so, <laughs> therefore, look at the source. And when it says purified, do not buy. Because purified Don't buy vapor purified. distilled means nothing else than your tap. Okay. Please drink your tap at home. Filter it in Los Angeles, especially in America. You should always filter your tap. Yeah. Um, and drink that for hydration. But don't buy tap water processed in a plastic container. What are... Save your money, please. Like rapid fire, three... Uh, brands you can buy in America that you like. It doesn't mean that one's better than the other. There's three brands you Fiji like. Fiji water is very good. Fiji, awesome, yeah. Uh, you can buy it literally everywhere. Yeah, I, think it's I love It's a very Fiji high water. quality water. I got obsessed with that. TDS 222. It's very silic. It's almost like... It tastes smooth, amazing. Very smooth like the St. Leonards. It has the same like mouthfeel to it. Yeah. It's very round, very smooth on the taste profile. Um, very interesting brands. Saratoga. Saratoga. From the East Coast. It's in a blue bottle, beautiful water, great water from from the um, from the East Coast. Comes in a blue cobalt blue uh, glass bottle, nice. very nicely water. Um, another one on the West Coast, let's say Arrowhead, or Poland Springs from the East Coast. Okay, great water. Mm -hmm. Ozark in Texas. Ozark. Great Ozark water. Springs is good water. Yes. Okay. Great water. So these are the brands. What I wouldn't buy is. Your Essentials, your Smart Waters, your Aquafinas, your Dasanis, Life Water from Pepsi. I just saw Gatorade Water. Yeah. Are you giving me like what the, like, I could not even. They don't have this. enough money. It's like really. <laughs> they need to make Gatorade, Gatorade Water. You make Gatorade Water. And Dude, I made a review about it and people laughed. It went viral. You're going to laugh when we leave here, but Prime, Prime won't stop sending me shit. And I don't work for them. They don't pay me, but they keep sending me cases. I don't drink it. Oh, did you saw my Prime video reaction video? they do like prime water now right i have a video on it where i tasting prime dude it's because, ass because i don't like it i don't work for them they keep sending me stuff but i don't post anything i don't funny. want it logan paul did a video about how amazing prime is and what i did in my thing so i took his video mm -hmm. i cut it again in pieces because yeah. he says because he made the decision between Prime and I think Red Bull or something. He made the decision between them both. But those aren't even okay. But he, and then he said Prime like, doesn't even have caffeine in it. Prime is this, and Red Bull is that. So and I said, yeah, and this water brand has that, and my water brand, everything was better. Yeah, because he said like sure. electrolytes, like he has like three hundred and four hundred, and Red Bull is less. And then I did mine like okay, mine's is three thousand. And then he said, oh, my, my prime has calories of so-and-so. So he's saying, oh, it's water. Mine doesn't have any calories. And how many forever, forever chemicals yeah, does this show Yeah, so this have? was like a, a fun video. And obviously then the fanboys from Logan Paul came to my channel and freaked completely out. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's water, Martin. Who drinks water? He's saying, I just did a video. Who and debunked, drinks water? And I just debunked your, your guru over there. That's all yeah. what I did. Who who loves to go to Japan and looks at death corpse? So yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry guys, uh, we should never ever think this is normal. It's not normal, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. But he's he's also like a huge like cultural mistake. I think he's a glitch in the matrix. Uh, let me let's let's wrap up things here. I do want to say um, just at the very end, what are a couple of things you would like to tell the average consumer about water? And are there any things you'd like to promote? Like, for example, your app or your website? Or... Yeah, correct. So, first of all, Honor Water. That's in general for me. Honor that's Water. Always honor Water. So, that means like when you, after you listen to the podcast today and you're starting to brush your teeth tonight, be thankful that you have running tap water because 2.2 yes. million people in the United States don't have running tap. 2.2 Regular, 2 million like, people. Boil advisory warnings where I'm from. 2.2 million people don't have running tap. 41 million don't have clean and safe drinking tap water in America. So this is crazy. One out of four people on this planet don't have access to clean and safe drinking water. So we should be very, very thankful that we have this luxury right now in front of us that we can taste different waters. Yes. That's a luxury. Yes. Full stop. Yeah. And we should really, really, really rethink our use of water. We should be thankful that we are able to do it and we need to help people who don't. Yes. So when you have 
a little money maybe, please go to Viva Con Aqua, help them out with some dollars or some euros and they're doing the right thing because what is really cool about Viva Con Aqua, they don't give the money to a government. They actually have their own test teams and they're going into the countries and building wells. That's the way it should be to gain we'll, we'll get, access. We'll, to, we'll get this link from you and, yes. put it, and put it in the show notes. It's very important to me. So this is a mm -hmm. great course to really support them. And I do this every year and I love, I love them to death. They're good people. Uh, second, when you want to learn more about water, you can go to my homepage, martin-reza.com or obviously follow me on my socials. It's very yes. easy. Martin Reza or Martin Reza official on, on TikTok or mm -hmm. Martin Reza on, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All of those X, in the show notes as well. Whatever you want to call it these days. And a really cool, exciting thing is I'm building my app right now. So that means in the future you can download it. If it's called Sourced, the app. And then you can scan your barcode of a bottle and it will showcase you the water quality report on my app. It will showcase pairing notes. It will showcase in general the, the, the tasting notes and even some videos maybe what I think about a water. So it's going to be really, really cool. That's very cool. Because again, like I want to bring more awareness to water and more transparency to water that you as a consumer can make the right decision. When that's you, my focus. I think that's really beautiful, man. And I'm really so happy that you could be here. When do you think that the app will be will go live? End of this year. End of this year. Yeah, I have the beta version already on my cell phone that I can test it out. Mm -hmm. But I'm not happy yet with everything how I like to see it. I'm very German when it comes to that. It needs to be perfect before in this case, launching something. In this case, you should be. I yeah. understand. And for sure, we will find a bug. You know this. And it doesn't matter how long you're doing a beta version. There will be obviously issues when we're launching it. 100%. I know it already. Yeah. It's the same with every car. Imagine there's pumping billions and billions of dollars into a car development. And when they're launching a new car, then suddenly they're finding out that maybe the red caps are not working or whatever. I'm like, you always yeah. know that. Yeah. So there's always some crazy stuff suddenly happening with cars. And I think the same is happening with an app. Like there will be always a problem and we will face it, we'll fix it. And then we will be have new version, but I want to make it free for everybody. It's very yeah. important to me. Yeah. It will be a free app for everybody. I'm trying to get obviously the water companies raising money for that, that they can support me a little because it's a very cost intensive sure. uh, undertake to create an app. It's not like, oh, let's do an app. It costs a lot yeah, of people money. People don't understand how yeah, much. It costs or, yeah. a lot of money and I don't like to like just give money away. So I need to make somehow a living as well. I would love to just live from love and water, but that doesn't work even for me as a water sommelier. Yeah. Um, and so if, uh, if people want to sign up for your water courses. Yes. And then I'm doing a, a certified water class. It's the water sommelier masterclass and go to my homepage and it will be launched there as well. So yeah. In the show notes, goes. website, follow him on all socials. Martin, I'm so honored and flattered and so lucky to be able to have you here. I'm so grateful for this. No, thank we you, made some John. funny videos today. We got to buy some waters. We tasted some cool shit. Thank you for doing great. this. It really, it means a lot to me. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I and hope to see you again And next time you're in soon. LA, we're doing a podcast in my space. Dude, we're going to do it in your beautiful, <laughs> beautiful home. Yes, I would love that. I like this. Guys, Cheers. thank you so much for listening. Follow everything. Uh, subscribe, all that garbage. Thank you so much. We love you guys. Bye-bye. And water is not just water. Cheers. Water is not just water. Right.